Do I look like a drug pusher or? <laughs> well, <laughs> looks can be deceiving. No, 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 look, <laughs> most people actually <laughs> carry narcotics, don't have ponytails and that sort of stuff. The problem is his passport. While immigration takes a closer look, Daryl claims it's just water damaged. It was in the car. It slipped out, man. It slipped under the seat. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. I didn't realise it, and it rained in. Yeah, okay. Because he had his window smashed from somebody breaking in, and the whole thing was flooded, and that's why it looks like that. What we found on this is that there are breaks in the security features that are printed on the laminar. On the adhesive side of the laminar, there is a security print. Once you lift that off the photo, it will break that security print. Car seals leak, mm. carpet gets wet, mm. passport gets soaked. It's a plausible story, but the idea is why would you have the passport about your person when you're travelling in your own country? Yeah, yeah exactly. Driving around with your mate. The top right hand corner, you can see the break is over the photograph. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then the bottom left. It's not very good at all. Yeah, the crown is just damaged. The hard thing is, like, this bloke's passport is false. He's very calm. In Melbourne, officers are just as puzzled by a Japanese tourist who can't stop sweating. We've got a passenger here who Michael and Peter are speaking to. And what do you plan to do here in Melbourne? Just uh, stay a few days and uh, to take train to Cairns. Okay. He's just decided to come to Australia two days ago. It makes us very suspicious. Do you have any accommodation in Cairns? What, what accommodation do you have? Somewhere to stay? A place to stay? Well, I have a hotel reservation. You have a hotel? Okay. Yes. You buy, buy this phone to use here in Australia? Yes. Yeah? Oh, okay. I just want to check the phone to see if there's any messages or um, any Australian phone numbers in there that might bring some sort of relevance to why he's here or what he might be doing while he's here. No clues in the phone, but the bundles of tissues might hold some answers. What are these ones for? Tomokazi's sweat glands just went into overdrive. It's 8am at the Brisbane Mail Centre. <gasps> oh, look, look, look! Oh, Mills and Boone, an impossible kind of man. Kath works for Customs. You know what, I've got the whole series of these. Oh, Melissa for quarantine. I don't have these too. They're part of the team that screens all overseas mail, postmarked Queensland. Radio. Oh look, it's a willy whacker. The most effective form of birth control ever invented. It's fair to say they've seen it all. Ah, it's a hen's night kit. It's not prohibited. The screening is a lucky dip that often pays dividends. All right, got a live one here from London. Looks like we've got a plant here. A live plant. Looks like it's a magnolia, if that's the right plant there that it's come with. Plants and soil from Europe bring with it the threat of disease. Oh, and inside we have a couple of worms. All right. This year. Just having a look through here to see if there's any more worms. Immigration look after you now, sir, OK? Back in Sydney, my name's Ross, I'm an immigration officer. How are you doing? What I need to do, Daryl, is ask you some questions about yeah. your reason for coming to Australia. Right. Okay, would you like to follow me? Just bring your baggage with you. Daryl's damaged passport has landed him in the hot seat. The main issue that is in question here is the fact that your passport has been assessed as a passport that has been tampered with. It's my original passport. It's just happened to get wet. It was left under the front seat of a car and the window was left open. Okay. That's what happened to it. It's me. You can see it as if you look clearly. It is an offence under the Migration Act to provide false answers or misleading answers to an immigration officer. Well, I don't know what to say to that, because it's, it's my passport. What's the main purpose of you coming here? He seems very nervous. He's like very, very sweating like quite a lot. The tissues are hiding some sort of crystal or resin. What is that? Oh. That must be drug. Sorry? That must be drug. It 
Green Gate. It's the final checkpoint for incoming passengers with nothing to declare. And everything inside the bags belongs to the, yourselves? Yeah. Okay, I'll just have a quick look in this bag here. Yeah. Mr and Mrs Mehmet are back from a holiday in Europe. Did you read question number six? Question number six, please. But there's a hiccup. I, mean, I think they've got a whole lot of bananas. Which... Do you have any... You have bananas with you? Yeah. Oh. How come you didn't declare your bananas? Oh, sorry. We, oh, bought, we bought those seeds on the plane. Did you watch the video on the plane about what you can bring into Australia and what you can't? Yes, we did, yeah. You did? Yeah, but I forgot all about it. We're both not really cold. We're not concentrating, I suppose. The fact is that you haven't declared them on your incoming passenger card. We're guilty. Yeah, yeah but... I had to oh, buy something be because I'm diabetic. I can yeah, prove it to, no, to eat and then I forget all about it. I don't need proof, sir. Yeah. I said the fact is that by signing the legal document and declaring that you have no food, you're telling us that you don't have any food with you at all. I'm, I'm rotten with the flu. Oh, I'm right, sure what you're going to do about it. In immigration at Sydney Airport, Daryl says he's here to visit a long-lost friend. We grew up together, we went to college together. That's how we, that's how I met Guy. You've never been here before? No. Daryl's having a tough time convincing Ross that he's just a tourist. Do you have a contact telephone number for Guy? Yes, I do. Do you know any other persons in Australia? No one. The main issue that is in question here is the passport that has been presented by you for immigration clearance has been assessed as a passport that has been tampered with. And given that, it brings to question your identity. Oh, OK. Which is not unreasonable, is it? No, it's no. not unreasonable at all, but that's, I can't say how much that got it went. But I've got my identity document here and my driver's licence. I do have those in my possession. Have you ever held another passport other than that no. passport you've been presented? Never. Never, ever. This passport was issued 23rd of March 01. On the back page, this is a replacement for passport issued at Pretoria 30 June 98, declared stolen. So the true holder of this passport lost his passport and <coughs> subsequently got this. Because he's got these documents, right? These documents were obtained after the passport grant of issued. this passport. By failing to declare these items, you could get a fine of $220 or you could even get taken to court. This is not the welcome okay. home the Mehmets had hoped for. Here, madam, would you like a tissue? Don't cry. I've got a jar if they want to put me to jail. No, no, it's not that. It's just, you have to understand the importance. I know I understand them, but I'm rotten with cold. Can you understand me? I've been, I've been robbed. I've been robbed. With, I'm standing on the middle of a road with no money. I've got more, more things in, in my mind. Yeah. I've got a lot of things in my mind. I can prove it. I've got a Polish report from, the, from, from, no, that's from fine, Holland. Sir. All I'm saying it's is that banana is a very high risk yeah. food to come into Australia and it is totally prohibited to come it into Australia. It looks like an innocent mistake, but rules are rules. How many times have you travelled in and out of Australia? That's the first time. Well, when you came over from Hungary. Mm -hmm. And yourself? Yeah, it's my first time out of Australia. Just hold a moment, I just want to speak to a fellow officer. Yeah. Just hold a moment. Right, yeah. Well, they've done the crime, okay. but should they get the fine? It's Nadia's call. It's their first time out of Australia. We've had handbags stolen, our luggage is... We've we been robbed in, in Denham, I was I'm in Holland. We've been robbed with everything. We're standing on the middle of a road with no money, no passport, no flight tickets, nothing. In customs, Tomikaze has confessed to carrying drugs. Do you know what that is? Yeah. So what sort is it? I didn't think it was uh, in there. So what is it? Um, uh, how do, I don't know how to say it in English, though. What do you do with it? Um, I used to... Um, I used to take that. Uh, I used to do that. So w what do you do with it? I smoke with it. You smoke it. Yeah. It's a live specimen with the live worms, so it's going to be all for destruction. The worms are going to be identified and then disposed of or incinerated, and the plant will also be destroyed as well. So the person who was to receive this will not get it. 
Instead, they'll receive a notice of destruction. London to Brisbane, now to the entomology. Meanwhile, Kath is x-raying a new container load of mail in from the UK. Somebody left their keys behind. <laughs> Dietary supplements. You start to pick up shapes and things like that. Uh, possibly some fishing lures. That would be a mobile phone charger. You can see the wiring is wrapped around. No, no, no. no. Oh, hang on. Can you um, grab that one? I think there might be tabbies in there. We've got one, two, three, four, and possibly one, two, three, four, five, yeah. maybe six there. Um, a normal videotape wouldn't have that inconsistency along that area. In Japan, are you allowed to take it? What is it? Uh, is, it, is it against the law or something? Yeah, in Japan. It's against the law. Tomikaze has been Sorry? caught bringing narcotics into the country. It is a drug, is it? Yes, it is. OK. The reason he was sweating so much, he's a drug addict. OK. What I need to do, if that's a drug, OK, I need to caution you. So listen to what I'm going to say. You do not have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? I understand what you're saying. OK. Because of the look of the particular substance, it appears that it may be um, the drug known as ice. We may need a, a translator, so... Japanese. The quantity that we saw at the bench seems to be personal use. Um, it will depend on what the extent of the examination is. I'll have to go because the further police here. Do you have any more? The demeanour of our passenger has changed significantly in the past 15 minutes. In Sydney, Daryl is falling apart, and so is his passport. He reckons it got wet. Now, has it been wet? Well, yeah, you can see his... I can see it's been... The pages have yeah. been wet, it's subsequently dried. And you can see that the galoshes, the left, upper left-hand side of the photo, they've been severed. And when you go to the right-hand side, these galoshes have been severed as well. Around the photograph, I can see some yellow. Is that glue? Fresh glue on an old passport could mean the photo was swapped. But we need to make absolutely certain that the exactly passport right. is a, a dead document. If it is yeah. a forgery, it's a good one. Damaging a passport with water is often done deliberately to disguise any uh, fraudulent activity that may have taken place. I'm just unscrewing some of these screws in this video cassette. As you can see from the x-ray, it appears to be some tablets. The sender oh. has tried to conceal them inside the oh. video cassette. The x-ray showed a little bit of an inconsistency, possibly tablets. So we're just going to open this videotape just to double check that they are in fact it is, it is tablets, they could be prohibited. Oh, oh, there we go, look at that. Put it on the bench, they're going to fall everywhere. The Mehmets have returned from the holiday from hell and landed into more trouble. I think of meats, dried meats and those sort of things, but as the girls have fresh food. Failing to declare their bananas looks like costing them a $220 fine. OK, because it's your first time travelling into Australia again, yeah. OK, and you look like you've genuinely forgotten about them. Genuinely, yeah, I right, yeah. won't be fining you today. I will be giving you a written warning. Yeah, that's all right. You will get a fine next time or even be taken to court. Yeah, I know that, but I, it's, it's oh, just an innocent, innocent yeah, we didn't feel it up. That's fine. Yeah. Fair enough. She's told yeah. you about right. it. I will be confiscating these bananas yeah, sure. today. OK? Yeah. I don't and want it. I don't want it. You can take your backpack there. OK? Right. OK, thank, thank you. you. Never even entered my mind a banana whatsoever. 
they do carry a very high risk of disease. Black cigatoka is one of them. And if these diseases get into Australia, they could ruin our banana industry in no time at all. I don't even want to go out of the country again. It was my first and last time. Never, ever. Home, bittersweet home. Can you believe it? It's Mrs. Mehmet's birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> it's her birthday. birthday. <laughs>back in immigration. Now, Daryl, I've had a good look at this passport and it is in very poor condition. I know that. Mm. But it's my real passport. Mm. <laughs> I asked you in an earlier question whether you had ever had another passport issued to you. Yeah, I did have one before this. It got lost. Yeah, the, the answer yeah, you provided was... to that question was no, you hadn't. No, this is my second British passport. Yeah, I think so. I'm sure okay. it is my second one. Have you ever had any problems with the police in South Africa? Uh, just depends what, what type of problems. What was the answer to the question, do you have any criminal convictions? Yeah. What's the answer you've provided? Good no. Mm. Is that a truthful answer? Besides that answer, no. No, it isn't, is it? But it was years ago. Okay. So does, that que does that question indicate to you any period of time elapsed? No, it doesn't. Have you committed any offences which have required you to present in court to answer charges? Uh, I don't know what... No, I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe a couple of... I don't know. Have you got a good memory? No. In Brisbane... Look today. The home video is not what it seems. Excellent. Have you got ten, ten tablets? They look like ecstasy. That's another one from the UK, is it, Kat? Yeah, yes, they don't seem to think we can x-ray through them. They look, they look fine on the outside, but an x-ray shows them up quite clearly, so here's another one. From past history, uh, usually ecstasy tablets that do come through, they have some sort of emblem printed on them. Commercial tablets tend to be very perfect in their, in their shape, the edges. These are a little bit rough, so it could be uh, homemade. Just going to take a little bit of the, the residue. And what the iron scan machine, it'll actually heat it up and cooks it. That's told us that it has tested positive to MDMA, which is the chemical name for ecstasy. And our graph shows us that it's peaked at the calibration for MDMA. The swab we tested was ecstasy. Police seized the ecstasy pills, but there was not enough evidence to charge anyone with importation. Ross from Immigration is finally getting to the truth. Daryl from South Africa has a criminal past. So, after the age of 18, which you've told me about this incident of breaking into a showroom and removing furniture... Yeah. ...have there been any other incidences where you have been taken to court and prosecuted? It was so long ago, I can't mm. remember. I was in hospital because my memories... Why were you in hospital? I was found OD'd on drugs, but I didn't take the drugs. Somebody had injected it into me while I was sleeping. Somebody tried to kill me. I think it was the ex-girlfriend. And I was in a coma, and I was on seven machines keeping me alive. What sort of drugs were injected into you? I don't know. They never knew. Have you ever been involved in situations where you've been prosecuted for criminal activity? Yeah, I think so. All right. Ross needs to determine if the offences are serious enough to prevent Daryl from entering Australia. I suppose it sticks with you forever. Do you want to tell me about those incidences, Daryl? In customs at Melbourne Airport, the suspected narcotic... Oh, that's come up for methamphetamine. ...has tested positive. Although this is only a presumptive test, it's not um, forensic, um, it does give us a, a good idea that it may be a narcotic. 
experience in. That would explain oh, okay. all that sweating, so a side effect new. from taking the designer oh, no, drug. We need to pack your stuff up and we'll take you into a room. Okay, and we'll continue the examination in there. Okay? It's called chasing the dragon. What they do is they get some aluminium foil, they put it in there and then they heat it with a lighter and then they breathe in the fumes. He admitted that he was a user in Japan and that this trip here was an attempt to him to get off the drug so he could then return to Japan drug free. Kamikaze was carrying one gram of ice and 0.3 grams of cannabis resin. He was convicted and fined $500. If we send you back to South Africa, would the police be waiting for you? No. Why? No one will be waiting. Well, you've given me... Except for my mother will have to come fetch me. There's two issues that we have at hand here. You provide an incorrect answer on the passenger card, and you've also presented to a clearance officer a document that is not deemed to be a document suitable for immigration Even clearance. Even though it's not real passport. Well, anyway, anyway, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Well, just sit down for a moment. I, no, I want a cigarette. No, no, I want a cigarette. Take a seat, now I'm getting kicked out for nothing. So I'm going to give you a notice of intent to cancel your visa. This is what drives me mad, because this is my real passport. It okay. got wet. All right. And now all this has come off because it got wet. If Daryl's even a chance to get in, he'll have to come clean on his criminal past and hope Paul can verify his ID. Would you be able to provide a telephone number uh, of any relatives that you may have in South Africa? My mother. Your mother? So we might be able to contact her? Tell her I'm coming home. Next week on Border Security. He's giving me his mother's phone number in South Africa. Daryl's true identity is revealed. Beg your pardon? Oh. We need to detain you in our immigration detention centre. In jail? Getting heroin, heroin, opium and epidemic. And so much shampoo, but so little hair.